Hello, I'm Gwen. I'm uh, living in the Netherlands with my husband and 10 year old daughter. We also have two budgies you might hear in the background. And I like to knit a lot. Um, this is my very first episode and I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, I'm just gonna try. So we shall see. Uh, people have been asking me for years to do this and I never thought I would be able to do it. But uh, I had an interview recently with uh, Amy uh, from La Bien-Aimé and Julia and it was so much fun. I thought I just have to do it. I have to try. So here's me trying. Um, it's MCAL season. I don't know if you are going to join, but I am. I've joined Stephen West's uh, Mystery Knit Along for four years and I've only finished one shawl. That's this one. It's my um, Slip Stravaganza shawl, which is huge as you can see. I have used uh, several yarns. The purple one is uh, Drops Baby Merino, and I've used West Yarn in Lavender Horizon, and a uh, very old stash, uh, Dusty Dimples, uh, called Petrichor, and some uh, from a Dutch dyer called uh, Het Wolbeest. This lovely sparkly, uh, speckly purple here. I always try to use stash because I never know if I finish one or not. Um, I've also uh, tried to make the uh, shawlography uh, shawl, but I chose totally wrong colors and I hated it. So I frogged that one and made it into a garter breeze for my husband, which is also huge. The orange one is um, John Arban. The blue one is Knit Crate. Uh, the green one is Lock Lomond from BC. Uh, the beige one is Drops Flora. And the red one is also a leftover Knit Crate. He loves this shawl. He wears it a lot in winter. And I have, of course, a twist and turns, which is not finished. And I don't know if I will finish it, but this is where I'm at. And it's a mess. <laughs> it's made of a uh, Holst Coast. I don't know the color uh, ways. But yeah, it's not really my Thing, this one so I, I don't know what to do with it just yet anyway this year put that right there this year I chose to use these colors they are drops fable and uh, because I wasn't sure I was going to join I thought I would go cheap so this isn't expensive at all no uh, hand dye join this year for me because I could not find anything in my stash that would go together so I just thought I have two balls of each color so that should be enough I can't wait for this one very excited um, yes well I have more shawls I'm not a shawl netter I usually say but maybe I am. This is the very first shawl I knitted ever. I just threw myself into the deep end. It's uh, suburban. I have no sorry. Uh, suburban wrap by Hoogie uh, Lopatelli. Am I showing you the right side? Yes, I am showing the right side. And I knew nothing of the gauge. Nothing of lace, so this took me forever. Oh, and there's also a hole in here I patched, maybe you can see. I hope this, I tried. <laughs> oh, if it's far off, you can't really tell. 
So, but this, because of my gauge was off, this is way too short. Wait, let me show you. So if I put it on, you can see, it's just oh, really small. I, I hardly wear it. I usually use it inside when I'm cold. This is really strange talking to myself like this. I hope it gets better. Uh, a bubble cow, also by Stephen West. I made for my daughter. This one is in uh, mostly uh, leftover yarns from Hobie and Drops, Knit Crate. And this bit here, I was sent some yarn by uh, Edna and um, for free to try. And I used those in this cowl and it's really soft. It's soft llama and the brown one is ruggy. Some knit crates, some drops. I have no idea what it is. This is sock yarn held double. This is also sock yarn held double from um, Len Yarns. Really warm cowl. But this is my absolute favorite shawl. This is a plumpy shawl by Andrea Maui. And it has brioche sections. Because the first time I joined Stephen West's uh, Knit Along was with Texture Time and it had brioche. And I did not understand it at all. So I threw it into the bin. But I really wanted to try and learn brioche. So I thought I would take an easier pattern and try it. So, but it worked out. And this one I really, really love. And I used hand dyed yarn here from uh, Herbstblatt Regina. Unfortunately, she no longer dies. Some knit crate. The green one, the speckled one is from Herbstblatt Regina. Some Biff Sugar yarns. And the pink one is Hobie, yet again. Soft, soft merino, babe, soft merino. Can't really remember. It's old. This is my favorite. I wear it all the time in winter. There you go. I also have some crochet shawls. This one I designed myself. It's called Cage to the Tango. You use two variegated uh, yarn cakes from different brands. This is Katya Spring Rainbow and it's a free pattern on Ravelry so if you like it you can go check it out. Lots of people have made this already. And this is my other favorite, a crochet mall shawl. So this is not knitting, this is crochet. And I used all kind of mini skeins and leftovers from mostly Dutch yarn dyers like Atelier Sopra, Sopra um, hand printed by Celine. Uh, is it Celine? Hand printed by. I'll find it. Um, some drops design and some Biff Sugar yarns from England. Okay, and now people seem to talk about their whips, so maybe I should too. <laughs> I think this will be a short one, because truly, no idea what I'm doing. Let me have a sip. This is some uh, ginger tea. We all have colds here in this house, so my throat uh, needs some tea. I am making a blanket. I'm trying to um, go through all my leftover acrylic stash from my crochet days. I used to be a crocheter before I was a knitter and I crocheted mostly blankets out of acrylic yarn because, you know, it's very expensive to do it in wool. This is a mitered square blanket by Louise Tilbrook. It's a free pattern. But you can buy the um, advertising free PDF on Ravelry as well, and maybe on her website too. And I used all 
all kind of leftover balls of acrylic yarns for this one. And my favorite square is this one right here. And I, it depends on my mood if I make a solid one or a stripy one. I really like this one as well. The pink and orange one. So it's getting quite big now, but not big enough just yet. And there's yarn attached, of course. Put that there. I also have a sweater for my husband, which lives in this handmade knitted bag by me, uh, also from acrylic leftovers. This is a cal I joined from Hanna Rimmen. Uh, she's a designer uh, for Nordic sweaters and everything. But this is something called Hunzestrik, if I pronounce it correctly. And you have all these small motifs and you stack them together and you uh, create these whimsical uh, rows. It, people use them for clothing and such, but uh, Hanna made a pattern for a bag. And I went rogue. The first part is from her pattern. And this is from charge I found on Pinterest myself. And it's also lined with fabric. And inside this bag lives my husband's sweater. This was also yarn gifted to me by Edna. It's called Ulrika Natur from uh, Svarte Varet. Um, it, this is lovely yarn. It's a uh, non-superwash yarn, but not scratchy at all. And the pattern is Copenhagen sweater by uh, Sarah Klint for Zwarte Varekarren. Uh, and my husband has a very long torso. And I've started the sleeve now. And yesterday I measured it on him and I only have to do the bottom ribbing and then the, bo the body will be done. And I'm hoping I have enough because I only have just a few balls left, four balls left. So I have to do two long arms and ribbing with just four balls left. So I'm going to play a bit of yarn chicken, I think. But it should be done. Just in time for winter, hopefully. And my other whip. Listen, this hand, this bag, I also made myself. And it's really tiny. I have a 10 year old daughter and my brother is getting married the day after Christmas on the 27th of December. And I have a green dress and my daughter has a green dress, different shade, different style, but it has no sleeves. And mine also doesn't have any sleeves. So I decided I would knit us uh, some lovely cardigans. So this is the Entrechat cardigan by Froginet. Um, but I added a lacy detail with leaves. Because in the pattern, it's just pearl one, knit one, pearl one, I think. And I found it to be... A little bit too simple for the wedding and I also had to adjust for the for the sizing because the sizing only goes to eight years old and my daughter's ten so she's quite a bit, bit bigger I uh, didn't do any math <laughs> I just went up an heel size this is a three and a half millimeter and the yarn is drops baby merino which more is, is more of a Port weight yarn and not a fingering weight yarn that was called for in the pattern. It fits great right now, but uh, I, I don't know. I hope I can make it work. <laughs> I've come a long way. I have split for sleeves. So it's now just back and forth. And then there will be a flounce thing here on the back. And we shall see if I, uh, if I can make it work. I hope so. And my cardigan will be made in this darker green color and this is drops cotton merino but i haven't started that one yet so 
Oké. Okay. I think I'm done. That's all I have for now. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I am going to try and edit this. And we shall see. Let me know what you think. I'll try and put everything I've talked about into the show notes uh, underneath this video. And uh, maybe next time I won't be so hasty and uh, I'll enjoy it. <laughs> because this, <laughs> I don't know. See you next time. Bye.